So hello everyone, uh, good afternoon. My name is uh, Roberto Sasso. I am a senior engineer at uh, Huawei. Today I would like to present uh, uh, InfoFlow LSM. It's a new Linux uh, security module that uh, specifically enforces integrity policy. Uh, this is uh, only uh, a piece of the puzzle uh, of a solution that uh, allows us to have a stable PCR in a system, in a legacy system which performs integrity measurements with um, I, uh, IMA and uh, uh, enable us to have a, a ceiling policy um, um, for a TLS key. This uh, TLS key can be used only uh, with a good software configuration. But today we'll talk about uh, only uh, uh, this part for the enforcement of the integrity policy. Why we need uh, uh, the enforcement of integrity policy? Why uh, InfoFlow LSM? Then I will give an overview of the, uh, the, Linux, uh, the security module, um, and a demo, and a conclusion. Why we need an integrity policy? Basically, uh, we have a standard IMA. Uh, this is the life cycle of mutable files. Initially, the content is known, and uh, when the reader uh, reads this file, this can be recognized uh, from a list of reference measurement. However, after the first access, uh, there are some writes. Then the content of the file is not known anymore, and uh, at the next read, then we get uh, in the measurement list this uh, uh, new digest, and this cannot be verified. Uh, so we, we send it to, to a remote verifier, the remote verifier checks the digest and it sees that there is no reference measure, measurement for that. So how we solve this problem? First, I will give you some definition. Uh, so we intend integrity as the ability of a software to behave as uh, intended of the, by the developer. Integrity policies of a set of, uh, set of a rule that allow us to preserve the integrity of uh, a software. And the trusted computing base is the set of subject and object which don't violate the rules of the integrity policy. Particularly, what, uh, which policy we want to enforce? We want to enforce Clark Wilson. Uh, there are the, the first rule, rule is that no read down, so a subject should not read an object with a lower integrity level um, outside the TCB because potentially this file can contain uh, malicious data and, and then the software can be corrupted. No write up. So a process outside the TCB uh, should not be allowed to write a, a file inside the TCB for the same reason, because it may inject uh, uh, malicious data and uh, the, the process inside the TCB uh, may be corrupted from this. And Third, we have a filtering interface, so we allow some uh, violations, so we allow um, a subject inside the TCB to read um, um, uh, potentially malicious data with the condition that uh, this uh, subject has a filtering interface, uh, so it don't, does not become corrupted uh, when it, it reads this, this file. So when we enforce the Clark Wilson uh, policy, uh, we know exactly uh, uh, which subject uh, uh, and object are in the TCB, so we are now considering a mutable file inside the TCB. And uh, we have a reader which uh, reads the file for the first time, time so the, um, the file is known, and the digest is, uh, is known. And then uh, the uh, mandatory control, so the Linux security model, depending on, uh, 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 so if the subject is in the TCB, it allows the write. If the subject is not in the TCB, then we deny the write. So if um, all the writes are uh, performed by the TCB, we, we, can, uh, um, uh, we can say that the file does not become corrupted, so the integrity of this mutable file is good. So this allows us to say, uh, well, okay, uh, the file was good at the beginning, so we have uh, the, the initial content is, uh, is known, and then the integrity of this file is preserved, so we can exclude it from the measurement, which evidence we give to the, to the verifier then. We give the, the evidence of the initial uh, content of the file, and then uh, the mandatory control policy that we are enforcing. So the fact that we, uh, this file is in the TCB and uh, which uh, subject in the TCB can actually write this, uh, this file. We also have a, a more complicated uh, scheme in which we consider also the offline protection. Uh, 
in, the, in this scheme, uh, uh, we have the uh, EVM key that is used to calculate the HMAC for the file. And this uh, EVM key is uh, actually sealed to, uh, uh, to the MAC policy, to the mandatory control policy, and to, to the initial value. Why? Because uh, when we boot the, the, the system the second time, so if we provide the evidence that the uh, integrity policy is enforced, and then uh, we have uh, the uh, key policy, which is bound to the initial content of the file, and uh, um, uh, initial content of the file, then uh, we can, uh, um, even if we are in the, in the next boot, we know that uh, in the first boot, uh, the file was processed correctly, because it was processed by the same, the same mandatory, mandatory control policy. Why we, uh, we, have, we introduced a new uh, LSM, uh, and why we don't use, uh, for example, Selenux? Selenux so actually can do, uh, can enforce the uh, multi-level security policy, uh, but actually it's not um, um, easy because, uh, uh, for example, we have to select a different policy. I don't know if it is possible easily to specify which subject uh, are in the TCB. So I, I was thinking to, uh, to have a, a, a different uh, independent security model which allow us to, to define the TCB more easily. And also, Selenux does not have the concept of uh, um, uh, filtering subject. So um, with a multi-level security, we can enforce the BIBA uh, integrity model. Uh, and and uh, uh, so there are no read down and no write up uh, um, rules. But uh, for example, if we have some uh, uh, violations, so if a subject in the TCB tries to read an uh, object outside the TCB, then Selenux uh, is not, um, uh, the, the, the language, the policy language is not powerful enough to enforce this kind of uh, uh, rule. Um, also, uh, so when we uh, enforce the integrity, integrity policy, we have to know which are the interaction uh, of the process. So, so which file are read by the process, which file are written. And if we try to discover all the process interaction uh, from, with the audit subsystem, this is a particularly difficult, difficult job because uh, we have many duplicates uh, permission because uh, uh, audit does not know if the same permission was requested before. So we have uh, many, many logs and we have to analyze them. And also, so if uh, um, we want to uh, support a Clark Wilson policy, for example, is Mac or in Linux, we have to apply the modification in every uh, security model. Instead, we can do the enforcement on top or on a different uh, security module. So um, we can enforce in, in, in this in, uh, integrity policy. And we use the LSM stacking capability to do that. So we, we, we don't modify the Linux policy on the, or the SMAC policy. And we define, we define our own policy uh, to do the integrity enforcement. InfoFlow LSM uh, has three main uh, modes of operation. Discover to, uh, to, know, to see which are the operations requested by the processes. Enforce, uh, enforce, uh, to enforce the Clark Wilson policy on the, uh, on the TCB and on the mutable files. And per permissive, so we check uh, if uh, um, uh, the process operation, if they violated the, the integrity policy, and we record the violation. So this is to uh, modify the policy in case, uh, for example, we need to add more uh, process in, in, into the TCP. So this is uh, what happens um, in, the, in the system when we have um, uh, multiple security models. In this case, we are using, a, uh, we have a lower um, Linux security model, which is a Linux OSMAC. They, con they continue to do their own enforcement based on, on their own policy. And then we have uh, InfoFlow LSM on top, and uh, uh, it um, uh, performs the, the decision depending on its own policy. And the LSM framework works in a way that uh, um, uh, the final decision, decision depends on the decision of each uh, security module. So when we are uh, checking the permission on the node, after the Linux uh, determines if the permission should be granted or not, 
Then we ask the LSM framework, which are the security identifier of the process which, uh, which is accessing the file and uh, um, the, the security identifier of the node, uh, the inode itself. And then we, we pass these two security identifiers and the operation requested, so if it is a read or write or read write, to uh, our decision module. And our decision module uh, um, um, uh, ask the, um, uh, another module called InfoFlow CTX if the subject and the, and the object are in the TCB, because this is needed to, to perform the decision depending on the, the clock wisdom policy. So we get uh, this, uh, this information, and then uh, we, perform, we perform the, uh, the decision. Uh, actually, um, uh, if uh, an object uh, is, in the, 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 uh, is in the TCB or not, uh, depends on two information. One is the, um, uh, the label, um, the policy, and the other, uh, and the other uh, source of information is uh, um, the um, extended attribute. So we have an extended attribute that we use to, uh, uh, to determine, determine if the, um, the, the file was created by the TCB. Now the, the decision part. So this is the uh, BIBA write-up uh, rule. So if a non-TCB subject writes a, non -TCB, a TCB object, this operation is denied. The same for BIBA read-down. So a TCB subject read or execute a non-TCB object, this operation is denied. Or if a subject uh, tries, uh, a TCB subject try to read an, uh, an object which is, which is not filtered, uh, which is outside the TCB and uh, does not have a filtering interface, then uh, also this operation is denied. So this is the format of uh, the, uh, the InfoFlow LSM policy. So we have a TCB object equal to security context, which is a uh, Selenux or SMAC label, and uh, we, um, we, we use it to, to say that the object is in the, in the TCB. TCB subject equal to sexctx to put a subject in the, in the TCB. And we have the last uh, type of uh, rules, which is filter object equal to um, uh, sexctx. So this object is a filter, meaning that this object is potentially malicious and we have to check if the subject has a filtering interface to uh, read uh, this, uh, this file without being corrupted. Actually, we have a... Um, two type of filter. For example, in the kernel we have dev null. We can write to dev null and we can read uh, from dev null. In this case, it's a filtering interface because it is the kernel which is doing the sanitization, so we don't get bad data from, from the kernel. So in this case, we are, we are saying that every object can read the, from dev null without being corrupted. Or we specify uh, for, for an object which uh, potentially is malicious, the set of subjects which uh, allow it to read this, uh, uh, the object without being corrupted. So we, we now load the policy in, uh, into InfoFlow LSM. We pass the rule like any other uh, um, LSM. And we are adding the uh, security context. So we are discovering in the, 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 the interaction using the Selenux or SMAC label. So this is the input that we give to InfoFlow um, uh, CTX. And we are, adding, uh, we are adding subject and object to the TCB. And also we are setting the, uh, the filtering subject. And lastly, we are adding uh, this information in memory uh, so that um, the, the, the security decision can be calculated uh, when a file is assessed. So lastly, we are not able to determine precisely uh, all the objects that are, that are in the TCB. Uh, for example, when we have a subject in the TCB, uh, the label of the new object depends on the label of the parent, uh, the process which is creating the file, plus the label of the parent uh, directory. So in this case, we are saying, if a subject is in the, in the, in the TCB, let's add also the object to the, to the TCB, uh, uh, regardless of uh, the, uh, its label. So we are uh, doing this, uh, we are marking the, the file as TCB, but this does not depend on the policy. It, depend on, depend, it is decided at cre file creation time, and we are marking this file as uh, this is in the TCB. 
So we check first if the subject which is creating the, the file is in the, in, the, in the TCB. And then we are setting a new uh, extended attribute in which we say this file uh, is in, uh, in the TCB. Actually, we are, we are using a bit mask. We are setting a, a bit to one, saying, OK, this file, uh, this bit means, if this bit, uh, this bit is set, it means that the object is uh, in the TCB. And when we call uh, uh, InfoFlow D instantiate, we are reading the extended attribute. So uh, um, we are, we are uh, um, saying that uh, when the, the, the file is uh, uh, visited for the first time, we are saying, OK, this file is in the, in the TCB. For the management of the context, so uh, we say that the policy contains a set of uh, security context. And uh, when we are loading the policy, we are actually converting uh, the security context into security identifier. And we are loading this security identifier into a red black tree. So when we take the, the decision, uh, so for example, in, in uh, inode permission, uh, and we are getting the security identifier, we know from this tree, by searching in this tree, if the, uh, um, if the file is in, uh, in the TCB or not. Now, I would like to show a case study. Uh, so we have a, a sample application, and we want to protect the integrity of this application. Here we have two types of files. On the top, we see a configuration file. This is an immutable file and can be recognized uh, um, with a reference measurement. But as I said at the beginning, we have um, uh, for mutable files, uh, this solution does not work. So we have to uh, do the enforcement with integrity policy. So myapp.state actually is storing the uh, current number of requests made by, by the user. So first, the user, uh, so this is a DNS resolver. So the user is asking the myapp what is the IP address of a server. Then myapp is querying the, the DNS and it is increasing the number of requests made by the user and uh, writing it to myapp.state. And lastly, is returning the IP address of the server to the user. So we want to protect the integrity of the, this application, so we have to uh, first find the TCB of uh, this application. And I will show how we can do it. So first, we are running uh, InfoFlow LSM in discovery mode. So we are booting the system and checking what uh, the uh, processes are doing. So the system is booting. OK. And now the output of um, InfoFlow LSM is this. So this is the set of uh, uh, operations that um, are performed by the system while the system is booting. And uh, as you can see, we are uh, using, uh, those are the Selenux label uh, attached to the uh, process and to the, and to the uh, file. So we are also considering the class. For example, we have a regular file, and we have uh, um, also, let's see. We have, a, we have also socket, for example. So we are considering different type of classes. Now I execute my app dot, uh, with a, we are asking the address of google.com. And we are getting the number of, current number of requests um, um, from the user. And we are getting the IP address. So now we discovered all the interaction, uh, included the interaction performed uh, by my app. And now we want to see, uh, we want to find the, the TCB for, for my app. So we are copying this interaction to a file. And now we, uh, we determine the TCB for, uh, for my app.
So this is a user space tool that takes as input the, the process interaction that we discovered, and we pass to it the uh, application that we want to protect. So this tool is analyzing the process interaction, and the output of, uh, of this tool is this. So now we have uh, the target of uh, our evaluation is my app, and we, are, we see that uh, my app is reading a, a file, resolver.conf, which is written by Network Manager. But since uh, Network Manager is not yet in the TCB, because now the TCB is only the, the application we want to protect, this is an um, integrity conflict. So potentially, Network Manager can write a, a bad content to resolve.conf and can compromise uh, uh, my app if we don't trust the Network Manager. But now we are trusting the Network Manager. So we add the Network Manager to the TCB. We add a network manager to the TCB, and we perform again the, uh, the analysis of, of um, uh, the integrity analysis. And as you can see, now the situation is much worse because we have a, a new integrity conflict from a process outside the TCB. So these are all the processes outside the TCB. And we see that now we have, uh, for example, null, uh, null device T, which is dev null. So we can say that uh, all the subject that can read this file and write this file without being compromised. So this is a candidate for being a filtering uh, uh, interface. For the, okay, let's see first. So we perform again the analysis. And now we have still some conflicts. We have uh, these three files which are um, outside the TCB, and those are files which are read by Network Manager, which is in the TCB. So we have to add uh, the, the, the um, more uh, processes outside, inside the TCB. In particular, this tool is uh, also suggesting which uh, subject we have to add to the, to, to the TCB. So, I will, I will add this subject. So now you see that the number of, of, uh, of subjects which are violating uh, the integrity policy are much more because we are adding a process to the TCB. And now we have, um, we are basically uh, solving the, uh, the integrity conflicts by adding a subject in the TCB or uh, filtering interfaces. Now I'm doing some assumption. Uh, uh, I am assuming that uh, some the, um, the process can, uh, so the kernel is able to filter, properly filter data coming from, the, from a, a socket. And these assumptions are not necessarily true, but now for the, for the this is an, an example of analysis, and then uh, uh, we need to verify this assumption. So if uh, effectively the kernel is able to filter the data coming from a, from a socket. So now I add uh, this as a kernel uh, T socket as a filtering interface. I will also add uh, init T FIFO file as a filtering interface because I assume that all the communication to uh, init uh, are uh, properly filtered. So init should be uh, good enough to uh, process, to pass the, the data coming from, uh, uh, from, the, from a FIFO. So I, I will complete the analysis. And then the final result is so this is the final analysis. So it, it, it is, there are a lot of uh, iteration. And then uh, at the end, uh, you will find a um, set of TCB uh, subjects that, that don't, uh, don't violate the, uh, the integrity policy. Now, for example, you will see that this is the set of uh, uh, processes that we add to the, to the TCB. And we have only filtering uh, uh, interfaces. So this is the 
uh, this, the interaction that you see are um, uh, two objects which are outside the TCB, and we are assuming that the process in, inside the TCB are able to properly handle the data uh, coming uh, from, from this object. So this is, uh, at the end, the, the list of TCB subjects that we have to trust in order to have uh, myapp.state uh, um, the integrity of this file uh, is preserved. So this is the set of subject, subject that we have to trust. And now the tool will, uh, will produce the, the policy that we have to give to uh, InfoFlow LSM. As you see, there is TCB object equal to a security contest. We have also subject equal to security contest. And we have also the filtering interface. And we are copying this, uh, this policy to the, uh, to the virtual machine. And now we are booting the virtual machine with the, uh, the, uh, with the um, policy, uh, the enforcement enabled. I will also uh, recreate the initial run disk because we are loading the, uh, the, the policy from the initial run disk. Now it takes a few seconds. So in this uh, particular policy, we are excluding the subject unconfined T. So when we log in as root, the uh, security context that uh, is um, uh, applied to the process running uh, to root is unconfined T, and we are excluding uh, this uh, process from the TCB. So since uh, we, this process is in the TCB, is outside the TCB, when we write a file in the, uh, from, uh, which uh, is included in the TCB, we expect that root is not able to write this file, even if it is root. Okay, we boot now in a enforcing mode. Okay. Now the system booted and we log in. As you can see, this is our context. Unconfinity, this subject is not in, uh, in the TCB. We execute uh, again my app. My app still works. We have uh, uh, the enforce integrity enforcement enabled, and now we try to attack. We are, we, we are trying to write the mutable file which is inside the TCB from outside the TCB, and we see what happens. So the operation is denied. And now we see the reason. So this is the subject which is performing the operation. This is the object, actually, should have been my app dot state. And this is the, uh, the operation. This is a BBAV write-up. So this um, um, a process outside the TCB is writing something inside the TCB. So this operation is denied. As you can see, this is a Fedora 30 um, um, operating system, which is enforcing the Linux policy. So we are not touching the Linux policy, but what we are doing additional enforcement on top of, on top of it. And we are doing this enforcement with this, this new uh, 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 InfoFlow LSM. So, conclusion. Uh, we published the code of, uh, of, uh, of uh, this new software. This is published in our uh, GitHub repository. We also published the user space tool that we use to, uh, to find the TCB from process interaction. And, uh, um, and uh, this is uh, currently under, under development. Uh, yesterday, I sent the first version of, uh, of uh, the first version of the kernel uh, uh, module. And uh, I can kindly ask you to have a look at the, at the code and um, uh, provide any feedback. Possible optimization. Now we are uh, checking uh, um, um, if a subject is in, it is in the TCB or not. For every um, inode permission, um, every time uh, inode permission is called. 
Well, this means that we are, we are, we are doing a search in a red-black tree for, a, a, for every uh, permission uh, request. Actually, we can uh, use the LSM stacking, uh, stacking feature to store if a subject in the TCB only uh, in specific hooks. For example, when we have a BPR um, um, installed creds, so when the credential, the new credential of the uh, is installed to a process, then we can say we can check at that at that point if the subject is in the TCB. So we don't have to do uh, um, every time for uh, in another permission. That will be an improve uh, a performance improvement, and that's it. Yes. Uh, yes, now we are that, for example, um, this is the, the, the list of uh, filtering interfaces that we, we considered. For example, we have this uh, PTMX, which are the control uh, uh, device to set the terminal. Or we have um, uh, actually, for example, this uh, FIFO file that I mentioned before, this init. Oops. So, for example, we have a dev init CTL, which is the interface I think is used to, uh, for a process to signal, uh, the, uh, uh, to, to do some signaling to system D. And I assume that this is a filtering interface because uh, if uh, system D is corrupted every time that a process communicates with it, then probably uh, system D should do uh, a better job to, um, uh, to filter to filter the data because systemd is the most important process in the, in the system. So I'm, do, I'm doing the assumption that uh, uh, the uh, systemd developers write a, a parser, very, uh, very, a very good parser for uh, the data that is coming from uh, init CTL. Test. Okay. So a filter is just something that you're specifying in the the, the, in the analysis. In, in the, okay. So it, it, it's it's basically whatever you're saying. So I could just say if I wanted to that just just any old any any SD Linux context is a filter, and then it would be treated thusly in um, in your policy. So you're making assumption. And uh, uh, you're saying uh, to the remote, uh, so when you are doing remote attestation, you are sending this, 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 uh, this policy that you are uh, developing. And the, 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 the remote verifier can say, ah, I trust the system D to do the filtering of the data coming from any CTL, then for me the remote attestation is a success. Or uh, there is a remote uh, verifier which has more strict requirements and may say, I don't trust that system D is able to properly filter data coming from any process. So for me, the attestation uh, fails. So this is remote attestation. So it's not a, a, a fixed uh, result, but the result of the, the outcome of the remote attestation depends on the requirements of, of, of the verifier. So uh, you as a platform that is being verified, you are sending all the data that are ne necessary for the verification. And it's up to the verifier to, to decide if it acceptable for him or not. So uh, the part you were talking about earlier where after the reboot you mm -hmm. were able to know that you didn't want to measure the file. So I'm trying to understand, so mm -hmm. my assumption is the system gets compromised at some point, remote attestation must detect that the system was tampered with. Mm -hmm. How, what is, I didn't okay. understand what happened across the reboot that you would be able to detect when the system was tampered with. Okay, so we can run InfoFlow in two modes. One is an enforcing mode, which means that uh, when there is an operation which uh, potentially corrupt the mutable file, we are denying the operation. Sure. So we are saying the process outside the TCB is not allowed to write a file inside the TCB. 
Or we can have the permissive mode in which we allow the operation, but we update the PCR. So we, have a, um, a TP, we are using a TPM key, and this TPM key is a sealed to a set of PCR. So in the permissive mode, we are saying we can allow the, the operation, but we change the PCR. So it means that the TPM key that is bound to, the, uh, to, a, to a policy is not usable anymore. But an attacker who, who compromises the system in a way that is not detected by InfoFlow LSM will not modify the PCR. And mm. after the reboot, the key will still unseal the same, and you will say, oh, remote attestation, you mm, need to okay. trust me because I'm not tampered with. Okay, but how the attacker is able to... Uh, Any other vulnerability anywhere else in the system. So okay. the attacker didn't compromise the system okay. by writing to the one file you're protecting. I exploited some vulnerability okay. elsewhere in the kernel. Okay, we are, yeah, we are, and, and, we are making an assumption. So right, are, but, but my, my assumption is remote attestation must be able to detect whether or not the system is in a good state or not. Yes. And in the case of a, a remote attestation system that's based on predetermined hashes or signatures that you can't tamper with on the device, no attacker can simulate a signature from a key in my vault, ever. Mm -hmm. An attacker can never do that, no matter how much they compromise the okay. kernel. Mm -hmm. But that, that attestation of the locally modified file, I have no way of trusting that remotely. I don't understand why this is any better than just a plain SE Linux policy. Because the Linux policy is, um, does not have a, uh, it's not enforcing any, an integrity policy. So, the TCB is something which, which we are defining, depending on, the, for, the, for example, the reputation of the process. Uh, so we say system, we trust System D or we trust Apache, but we don't trust uh, Postfix. Uh, so we are uh, doing on the, uh, so on the device that we want to attest. We are making our assumption, but that does not mean that these assumptions are accepted by the, the, by the verifier. So our goal is just to enforce the integrity policy according to our policy. If the policy is not acceptable, sure, uh, uh, then, then, then the testation fails. Okay. So how does uh, this come into play into offline tampering of the files, actually. So when your okay. uh, system is not running, that's one question. And two, actually, mm -hmm. so uh, how does this work across KXEC and uh, other scenarios, actually, so where in your current kernel? Okay, uh, so uh, in this uh, particular version, uh, uh, presentation, I didn't mention offline protection. Or, or at least I just briefly mentioned it, but I didn't want to make the presentation too complicated because this is uh, a topic uh, it, itself. But for the offline protection, we are using EVM, and uh, so um, I say that we don't measure the file. We, uh, if, uh, um, uh, if it is a mutable file, we don't measure it anymore. But we have a... Um, uh, so how, we can, how uh, IMA determines if the file should be measured or not? Because we are, attacking, uh, we are attaching to each file the HMAC. And the, the key used to calculate this HMAC is sealed to a software configuration. So you can actually get the EVM key only if the system is enforcing the, uh, integrity, the integrity, if um, only the uh, initial content uh, um, is allowed. So only if the file is, is uh, uh, initially is, uh, is good. So we are taking, for example, the reference measurement from the distribution. So we have a, or an empty file or a file with a header. And this is the initial, the initial file that, and we allow the system to access only this. So the, the file must, must be in a, known, in a known state. And the VM key can be unsealed only if all the, these conditions are met. And then we, when we reboot, if we find uh, uh, a valid HMAC, it means that in the previous boot, uh, also the, uh, the system was enforcing the integrity, was reading a file uh, uh, shipped by the Linux distribution, and 
we can continue to uh, 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 grant access to the, to the file, and we, we, don't, we, don't measure, uh, we don't measure it. So yeah, the goal is to have a stable PCR, uh, like uh, Paul said, in a system which is performing a, a file measurement. And this is only uh, one, uh, uh, one part of, of, the, of, of the story, because so we are not measuring a mutable file. We are also using a whitelist approach to say that uh, we measure uh, the whitelist at the beginning when the, when the kernel starts. And we are, do, we are not doing a uh, further measurement. So if we, are, um, so we have a whitelist for the immutable files, this scheme with the integrity, the integrity policy for the mutable files, so, so the PCR remains stable. If we have the permissive mode, so we are allowing a, a integrity uh, uh, violation, then the PCR will change. And then uh, uh, we are not able, uh, so for example, we, we delete the EVM key, so the system is not able to calculate a valid HMAC anymore, and uh, we recognize uh, uh, tampering at the, ne at the next boot. So are you doing your integrity check before or after the uh, mandatory access control checks? After. Then you're not going to get called if the mandatory access control check fails. Sorry? No, you're, no, no. So if a Linux denies the operation, I, 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 we, are not, we are not getting uh, 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 the operation in, in, our mod, in, in our module. Because we are still, we are still doing the, we are not touching the, the Linux uh, um, enforcement. So we are doing enforcement on top. Right, but if 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 in no. if in the in the module stack the uh, the SE Linux gets called before you do, and the SE Linux denies the access, then you're not going to get called, because no 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 we uh, yes, no, but no, no, for yeah. for us is you okay okay yes so if the the interaction does not happen, it is not so the process uh, cannot corrupt. Uh, a file because it's a Linux uh, first which is denying the operation. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yes. That makes sense for enforce, but for audit, when you're trying to build the model in the first place, you have to just turn off SE Linux enforcement to build that full audit log. Mm -hmm. Or we can have both a combination of both, meaning that uh, we assume that, uh, so we also measure the C Linux policy, so we assume that. The policy does not change from the discovery to, to enforcement. But I'm just saying, in order to get a complete discovery to really build the yes, correct yes, TCB, yes, yes. you need to disable SE Linux enforcement. Yes, uh, would be helpful, yes. You shouldn't have to be able to disable SE Linux enforcement. You can stick yours your module in before SE Linux and have it being called before SE Linux and have SE Linux come after in the stack. Mm. Yes, because the SE Linux label are applied before, not in the permission request, but they are applied right. in, a different, in different hooks. Different hooks, yeah. Yes, it could work, yeah. Thanks. Okay, thank you.